After almost 20 years, Samus Aran has finally returned in a brand new 2D Metroid game, and today I'm here to tell you why it is absolutely worth that $60 price point. On the remote alien planet ZDR, Bounty Hunter Samus Aran investigates a mysterious transmission, but ends up encountering vicious alien life forms and chilling mechanical menaces. What's going on guys, hope you're all having a great day today, and today we are here to talk about Metroid Dread. Of course, this is the newest in the Metroidvania style Metroid games, which feels kind of strange to be using that term, because in case you didn't know, the term Metroidvania comes from both Metroid and Castlevania, you put them together, and it almost created its own subgenre. Now this was my very first experience with the Metroid franchise, it's one that I've always been interested in, but of course on the Nintendo Switch this was the very first Metroid game we've had. We've not had any of the Metroid Prime games which I'm very excited for Metroid Prime 4 and hopefully they drop that Metroid Prime trilogy at some point, but because of that I've never been able to play any of the games. You know, I did own a Nintendo Wii, never played it there, never played it on the Nintendo DS, it's just a franchise that I never had the chance to play. So now finally having played through this game, I can safely say that I am definitely going to be there for whenever they drop more Metroid games because I think this franchise is fantastic. First thing I want to mention, if you are not a fan of the Metroidvania genre, you're not going to like this game. It is through and through 100% a Metroidvania game at its core and it doesn't do anything to set itself apart from this genre. It doesn't go out of its way to change up things a lot but I feel like that's where this game fully succeeds. It never sets out to reinvent the genre in any way, it just seeks to master every single aspect of it. So on the flip side of that, if you're a fan of Metroidvania games, I feel like this is almost the definitive one. Everything about it feels like they set out just to perfect all these aspects that you love within the genre. So in a way, it feels like a love letter to the franchise, to the genre as a whole, because everything here that you want, not only really in a Metroidvania game, but just in platformers in general, I feel like is here. The level design is fantastic. I love the way that it implements the different powers that Samus acquires over the course of the game and then you can go back revisit these areas and it never feels repetitive either. Sometimes having to go back on yourself can get a little bit boring, a little bit tedious, but I never felt that way within this game and some of that might come down to the fact that it's a relatively short game. It took me maybe 10 hours to complete. Of course, I, I died plenty of times. There's times where I got lost, but I was never frustrated. Not in a way where I wanted to put down the game anyway. One thing that can be very hit or miss when it comes to Metroidvania games is the difficulty. It's all about getting that right balance of things not being too easy but not being too hard. Metroid Dread, in my opinion, just gets it right. It is a tough game at times. It is pretty unrelenting, but if you die... It is absolutely your own fault. Uh, I found that sometimes I was doing like a spin jump and sometimes it wasn't properly doing it, but it was because I wasn't timing it right. It was never a problem with the game's mechanics. It was all about the timing and, and getting to know how these enemies work, especially when it comes to the boss fights, which I want to bring that up. The boss fights in this game are incredible and some of the best I've experienced recently. Each one very much stands out from the other. They increase in difficulty as you go on, but there's not these insane difficulty spikes. Even the first boss fight, or at least the first main boss fight, it's pretty difficult and I died a hell of a lot of times. But the boss fights are designed in such a perfect way where you will die a lot of times fighting these boss fights. But with each time you die, you get to understand the cycle of how these enemies' attacks work. And once you understand that, it all comes down to your skill in defeating them. There is no easy way to get around it. You just have to go with the flow and understand how these attacks work. You just slowly learn them over time. You have to be paying attention throughout this entire game. Even when it comes to the level design and navigating the map, it never really guides your hand as such. You just have to pay attention to where different things are and when you can go back on yourself. It's not just 2D platformers that struggle to get this stuff right. It's not just platformers in general, it's just video games. There's always something that they'll drop the ball on, whether that be you know, the boss fights, they might have incredible level design, incredible gameplay mechanics, but then the boss fights come along and they're extremely weak. Or you might have amazing boss fights, but the level design might be a little bit mediocre. All the difficulty spike is way too high, but everything else in the game is fantastic. So then it just becomes a very frustrating experience. Metroid Dread, I feel like just gets everything right when it comes to gameplay. Now we'll move on to the story, which is perfectly fine. 2D platformers don't have to have an amazing story. This is the kind of game where it is very reliant on how good the gameplay experience is. This isn't The Last of Us, this isn't God of War, this isn't the single player PlayStation exclusives where they have to have amazing stories and amazing characters. This is a game where you run around as a bounty hunter and 
shoot a bunch of aliens, it's a 2D platformer. And Samus as a character, I feel like works very well in that Doom Slayer Master Chief way where it's the very silent hero that is also a complete badass. It's probably unfair of me to put Master Chief in that category because he definitely talks and has a personality within the games, but I feel like he's comparable to these characters. And I know in the past Samus has maybe had a bit more of a personality, but as I've never played those games, I can't really do the comparison. For me, Samus worked as a, a very badass, no-nonsense bounty hunter character that I really enjoyed playing as, and especially some of the badass moments that she has where she'll just sidestep a massive blast from a boss fight, as if it's nothing. So if you're looking for emotional depth in the story, you're not really going to get it. There's certain things that come into play regarding Samus's past, and of course, there's story at play, but it's definitely not the focus. Now, the last thing I want to mention is one of the most interesting parts of this game, and it's the thing that really stood out to me from the trailers, because if you remember when they released that first trailer, that initial cutscene, you had the Emmy chasing Samus, came across as survival horror. When you're playing this game, it is basically a survival horror when you get to those Emmy stages. They are not all throughout the game, which I think is good, because if they were in every single part of the levels, it would get very hard to play. But when you get to these Emmy zones, there's no easy way around them. You have to be either stealthy, or you just have to be quick. On your feet, you need to understand the level design once again. Or you need to have incredible reflexes, because when those Emmys catch you... It is really difficult to cover them. It's intentionally made so you have to be very lucky, or you have to get your timing absolutely perfect. I personally found those sequences some of the most frustrating in the entire game, but it was frustrating in a good way, because I really appreciated the design of the gameplay there, and the way that the Emmys are portrayed, they're kind of like a Terminator or like a Predator in a way, probably more accurately like a Xenon. Morph. So if you're a fan of those like old school sci-fi horror uh, antagonists and creatures, the Emmy sits right into that category. But overall, Metroid Dread is a fantastic Metroidvania game that pretty much perfects every single aspect that you would want from it. Level design, gameplay mechanics, the boss fights, everything in this game is pretty much perfect. The story leaves a little bit to desired, but you know what? Works well enough for the type of gamer that it is, so I would highly recommend going out and picking up this game. Regardless whether it is $60 because, yeah, I think it's worth it. So with all that in mind, I'm going to give Metroid Dread an A. Guys, I'd really appreciate if you could leave a like on this video as it really helps get the video out there to more and more people on the YouTube algorithm. Also subscribe if you enjoy this video and want to see plenty more Nintendo content from me. Of course, Pokemon Brilliant Diamond is releasing on November 19th. Definitely going to be picking that up and doing a review. Same with Pokemon Arceus Legends and then Kirby and the Forgotten Land that comes out next year. Pretty much any big Nintendo exclusive that comes out, expect me to cover it here on the channel. Also head on down to the comment section below. I'd love to hear your thoughts on this game. Do you think it is well and truly worth that $60 price point? Or do you think it's waiting for a sale for maybe like $40? As always guys, thank you for tuning into to chat today, and remember, even in the worst of times, there's always entertainment. See you guys next time.